ladies and gentlemen, this is your host Nino and in today's video we shall be browsing the internet from the book 8088 Modern DOS Computer via this Ubuntu Linux machine and I mean a really over a network connection, not over a serial line connection. Not like this one is going to a serial line over here and just firing up Linux command line browsers, but really this thing with its own browser shall do that. The feat is accomplished as follows. We will first need to connect the machines physically. And the book 8088, the modern DOS computer quite beloved on this channel, is having in version 2 a COM port, which is really nice because you can connect it via three wires to a Linux RS232 to USB adapter. And on Linux, this thing here is appearing as DAF TTY USB 0. Can be also ACM 0 for you, but makes no difference. Now how to make a null modem connection, just let me demonstrate it to you. It is reasonably simple in its main parts, there's just one further trick needed for the book 8088. So you see, we're having here yellow to yellow, ground to ground, so this is the upper rightmost one, stays the same. But here green is once on the right, here green is once on the left, you need to cross over RX and TX. Between them one pin remains free, so there's a free pin. Rx and Tx, Tx crossed over, free pin and ground, yeah, on both sides. What you will also need to connect is this upper left, upper, uh, upper left, lower left, and this remaining pin second from the right on the upper row. These three need to be connected through a wire, yeah, that you will need to build yourself. And these lower two central ones also need to be connected just on the book 8088 sign side as it is pretty capricious as to whether it notices its serial port is working or not. So you see me having worked here a bit with a scalpel and some TIXO, some adhesive tape to build these wires. Once you do that, you're having a connection from the COM port of this machine to the TTY USB 0 in my case port on that machine. The next thing you need to do is to get a packet driver, which is a sort of little DOS program, something that you'll be running here. Yeah, of course, you're getting it on Linux, but you need to transfer it to DOS and run it there, whose task it is to change that serial line from the perspective of DOS into an Ethernet line. It is going to be a virtual Ethernet line, similar to what would be happening if you are using dial-up internet. Only we will be going for something called slip serial line IP, not for PPP, which you might have also heard because PPP is just simply more of a hassle to set up, whereas slip is extremely straightforward. Now, first thing you need to get is of course, said packet driver. And here you are seeing the internet address from which to obtain it. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash crinuer dot com slash driver slash packet d11 dot zip. And we will need indeed the program ethersl.com from inside. Once we have that program, we will be sharing Ubuntu's wireless connection over the serial line with the DOS machine. And I actually made a couple of brief notes about that over here. Exactly. So once you have acquired ethersl, then you will need to fire it up as follows. AtherSL, OX64, and so on and so forth. That will be the command that will be used to give us the change of the host uh, of the serial line to an Ethernet um, link. 
But of course, the Ethernet link needs further specifications. And those will go into a file named mtcp.cfg, like the configuration file for mtcp. And there you're having the specifications which you see listed here essentially you should also add two lines in auto exec but and if you're interested in obtaining the entire mtcp suit you're getting it from brutman labs over here but we will not be going much into mtcp here further we just really need the packet driver but with that configuration, we know most things and they will work for the MTCP programs, in particular, also the name server one. Unfortunately, that will not be picked up by our Bobcat browser. So that will need a bit of an extra adjustment that I will point you towards in a second. Other than that, you need then to set up the Linux side. You really can do that independently of the DOS side. You first say STTY C local CRT minus CRTS CTS on your serial line with a speed of 9600, which is pretty realistic. So we're setting up the serial line properties, which we want. Then we are doing SL attach, which means serial line attach in order to turn the serial line into an Ethernet line via the slip protocol at the desired speed and for the desired interface. Once you do that, this TTY USB 0 will be turned into something called SL0, the network interface SL0, which you then if config with a point to point connection, this is not a typo, it's only one T, and bringing it up, and then you're adding a route to the DOS IP over the device SL0. Note the IP addresses. The Linux machine has a one in the end, the DOS machine has a three in the end, because somewhere I read that they should be at least two addresses apart. In other words, don't call them one and two. <laughs> then you need to enable IP forwarding. So you may be echoing one in one way or another into this, this proxys net IP4 IP forward. And then we will be using IP tables to essentially channel everything through WLAN zero, that is the wireless interface of the Linux machine. So that's what you execute here on Linux. And once you have gotten your nice Ether SL program, as well as the WAT TCP suit over to DOS, we shall be continuing with the setup there. And there I shall also demonstrate how to run Bobcat. So moving you carefully over here to the DOS side of affairs. You can assume that all I have shown you is already set up on the Linux side. And now we just need to get the DOS side running. Okay. So I guess you see the screen well enough. Excellent. Now to show you the auto exec dot bat. You see here the MTCP slip references and the MTCP CFG reference. Then I'm going to be showing you MTCP.CFG. So that is what we are having here. And we are having here Ether slip. I just forget always is it a com or an exe, but Oh, it's a way too long name. It is Ether SL. Dear Ether SL. I think it was an X, but I'm no, not exactly sure. No, it's a com. So I was wrong. It's a com. So there we are having the Ether SL program, which then shall execute its little magic and bring us into the internet. Okay, we are waiting for the dir to complete. And you know, I actually went ahead and extracted everything into the MTCP place, where I have also the MTCP programs, because I really don't want to 
have networking programs all over the place. And here, once you run that bcat exit, this is a self-extracting archive. I'll show it to you again. This bcat e minus uh, bcat minus e zero six exe. This is going to extract and extract things for a quarter of an hour. You will really think that you're going crazy, and then in the end, it is going to offer you to configure things. And I must say, the configuration looks quite impressive, except that. It's a different thing yet again, and I didn't want to change what I had already gotten working for MTCP. So I simply decided, look, I will adjust the Bobcat configuration for what I got working with MTCP. If that is something you intend to do, then this video is for you. If you want to go with the default Bobcat configuration, you see it has here PPP program, it has here some slipper program and so on and so forth then you may as well just go with what Bobcat provides. It is really a one, once for everything type of solution and quite impressive in that regard. Now, once you do your Bobcat configuration, which it is going to ask you and, and you can answer whatever you want because you're going to just totally overwrite it. There are a couple of files which are being created and we shall now examine them in sequence. So there was, yeah, let me see, how was this thing called actually? Yeah, netdial.scr. This is essentially a file containing modem chatter, back and forth, what shall be told to the modem, what reply shall be expected and so forth. We nuke everything from it. There is just one hash sign, which I kept in the end. It had some end of file marker. I thought maybe that's somehow useful, but you empty that file. We do not want any script of dialing anything. We're having a direct connection to the Linux box. Any dialing commands will at best be seen as line noise and at worst upset something. So that you empty. The other thing you need to pay attention to is in the directory bobcat, the file whattcp.cfg. Notice only two Ts. The name server there was set to something ridiculous and I set it here to the name service 8888 and 1111. The rest you don't need to touch, but if you do not adjust these things, they will just, you will never have a correct name resolution. I was quite fighting with it because apparently it is not taking whatever you set up in the MTCP configuration file before. So in what TCP CFG you need to adjust the name servers. Going back one directory, we are having now a look at our main configuration file which was bcat dial.bat. This is a batch file, it's a DOS script, which is configuring lots of things to happen before we start up Bobcat or Lynx. It, the actual program executable name is Lynx. And you delete there everything with exception of the following couple of lines that are actually the relevant ones. Here we are executing the ethersl line that I have been showing you before, the line from here, right, for the COM1 port. So this is where, when you say bcat dial, you finally get the packet driver. Then we are setting here the gateway and then the IP is echoed, the gateway is echoed, the net mask is echoed and the IP address is echoed as set to something. And there you match whatever values you chose to have in your 
what TC, in your MTCP configuration file. So MTCP and Bobcat are going to have the same idea of who you are network-wise. And once you have done that, these are the only lines that matter. Then comes the section where Bobcat is starting and so on and so forth. You do not need to bother with anything below, but all of this mambo jumbo that you will be finding here, by default, you need to erase. Maybe I can actually show you the default configuration file now that I have shown you what to change. But I have it as a backup file actually. And that's quite useful in case you want to have things back. This is what the configuration really looks like once you set up a Bobcat by default. So there is some blah blah about dialing. We don't want any of this. And the interesting part is this net dial part, this slipper part just didn't work. It decided it wants to have a speed of 2400 and I did not immediately see how to change that and I thought okay look we're not having that so you see here there's some PPP discussion uh, here you are just simply setting manually the values you do not have any of these percent sign some things you are just adjusting these the way I showed you everything above and below it goes the slip C slip examples, all of those go. This, this here, all of this is gone. And then finally comes your Bobcat section. Okay, so now that you saw it, we are ready to fire up Bobcat and visit the Zern web page. Okay, so book cut dial. You see how nicely things got executed here, the IP address was gotten and so on and so forth. We have no expanded memory, we have no extended memory. It starts with to sleep perchance to dream and it is absolutely incredibly slow. In reality demonstrating that browsing over this type of machine was never a really feasible endeavor, even in a completely text-only confined fashion. So we are waiting for it to load its default homepage. I find it so cute that I have not yet decided to change it. I love also the idea that we might be having Gopher sites and Telnet sites. I mean, the only Telnet site I know is maybe towel.blinkenlights.nl where there was the Star Wars movie. But anyway, let's go now. You do that with the command G to the URL we want, and that is info.cern.ch. And going there, pressing enter now, look how long it will take it to get this site. And then look at what a sort of spectacular site we're even talking about. If you flip out your phone swiftly enough, you might be able to finish it before it shows it. So here we are now on info.cern.ch, a completely text only confined site where we can do a couple of things like learn about the birth of the web or browse the first website. Let's browse the first website. I mean, we're here anyway. I hit enter to open that link and it did read 512 bytes of data and that's the browsing speed we're having. I mean, yeah, great that you read the you read the first 512 bytes of data. I'm so proud of you. Will you finally show us the website? Y 
Yes, what the World Wide Web is. It is a wide area hypermedia information retrieval initiative aiming to give universal access to a large universe of doc. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm gonna go back and forward. And somehow it does not look like we can do very much, but I can maybe click this hypermedia thing. What is hypermedia? I have yet to look up the key commands of Bobcat. But largely it seems like we're getting somewhere. Yeah, what is hypertext? Hypertext is text which is not constrained to be linear. Hypertext is text which contains links to other texts. The term was coined by Ted Nelson around 1965. Though if I correctly remember, there were ideas in that direction I think also by Vannevar Bush in the end of the 1940s. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are surfing the internet over Bobcat. I know what you're all thinking. Why don't I go just to some other website, some real website, some modern website? And I'm going to go to the British side of the BBC to bbc.co.uk. And I would be absolutely surprised if that were to be possible to be opened over HTTP instead of HTTPS. And we're trying an HTTP connection to a site whose content is likely larger than the RAM of this computer and therefore more than likely to cause a freeze. But as we're here together, why not give it a shot? So we sent an HTTP request and are waiting for the response. I bet whoever is looking at the logs is thinking this has got to be a joke. But no, it's not. You are visited by Bobcat, dear BBC. <laughs> I don't know how often that really happens, but it happened today. And you know, if nothing works or if you have enough of it, there's always the turn off button. Ah, the connection has been aborted. And we can't access the document and so on and so forth. You cannot really browse the modern web with that. You have to find anything that is still HTTP only and best text only. If we have had enough of our little adventure, we can now press Q. Quit, yes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the end of a beautiful little bobcat adventure. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you, <laughs> you like the idea of challenging the web with a decent DOS browser. I hope to greet you here soon again for further adventures and if you're not a subscriber yet, then please consider it. Until we meet again, I wish you a wonderful time and from me, Goodbye.